right, what's good guys? So exciting announcement right here. So I'm at Toka North Van right now, which is like an indoor soccer facility. And I've got a little setup right here for Intermotives. So this is my brand and they're gonna be the first place to carry it. Um, so they've been gracious enough to allow me to set up some of my stuff. So we've got tees here and then we've got some hats as well. So if you guys are in the area, definitely come check it out, come cop some gear. Um, I only provided a few sizes of each. So if you guys wanna get something, definitely come quick because um, hopefully it doesn't last that long. But really excited, big shout out to Toka. And uh, yeah, if you guys are in the area, come check it out. Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today is a beautiful fall day in Vancouver. I'm just on my way to Haven right now to pick up um, something that I ordered like a week ago. Um, something I'm really excited about actually. I'll go into detail once I, I pick it up with you guys, but basically it's like my new fall like everyday jacket um, from Haven's new Gore-Tex line. As you guys know, I just put out my brand Intermotives recently, so um, I haven't really been spending a lot of uh, time or money on clothes like for myself, so. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of look and see if I can update the wardrobe a little bit. You guys probably know by now, but Haven has basically like become like the brand that I go to for like one or two staples every fall. Um, just because they do such a good job at kind of combining the technical aspect as well as the performance. So I don't really feel like I can get that anywhere else and um, it's a Canadian brand. All right, just left Haven. I picked up the jacket that I went to go get and uh, it's in this like giant bag, so it feels like kind of obnoxious, but I'm really excited about it. And uh, they didn't really have any pants that I was interested in like for fall. Um, so I'm gonna go over to Road and Gray right now just cause it's like two blocks away and uh, I'm gonna see if I can have some better luck over there. All right, what up guys? So I'm back home now and I just wanted to quickly show you guys the Haven jacket that I picked up in a bit more detail. So as you guys can see right here, it's in this giant bag. Another nice touch from Haven is that it comes in this really nice like coat bag. These sorts of bags are typical that you see with like higher end outerwear or some like suits and stuff like that. So it's a nice touch from Haven. It's got their own branding on it. All right, I just went to go get a hanger because I wanted you guys to get a better look at the jacket. But this right here is the new Haven Spectre jacket, I believe is the name of it. And this is so nice, guys. It's amazing. I'm so excited about it. I honestly think that this is one of the nicest jackets I've ever purchased and uh, I'm just ecstatic to have it in my wardrobe. Every season, I like to kind of look and see if I can buy like one really nice coat that I can wear like every day. Um, and this is definitely the one that I went for this year. This is one of the coats that Haven released as part of their new collaboration with Gore-Tex. It sold out really quickly. I think this only lasted like a day, if that. So but just a few specs about this jacket. So this jacket is constructed with three layer Gore-Tex guaranteed to keep you dry fabric. So it's windproof, it's waterproof, it's got YKK zippers. This is a size large, just for you guys to know. It does fit true to size. I've tried it on before. The coat itself is this really sleek black color and it's got really nice um, zippers all across. It looks like they're water resistant zippers as well. Different zippers along the chest, got pockets down here, and then dual zippers so you can kind of style it uh, whatever way you want depending on if you like to have the zipper up. This is like the perfect jacket to wear if you live in Vancouver, honestly, with all the rain that we get during the fall. It's not too heavy so you can wear it in the spring if you wanted to as well. I'll show you guys what it looks like on just so you can get a better reference for me. So I'm six feet and 170 pounds so um, you guys can kind of get reference if you maybe find one on like the aftermarket just because Haven has sold out of them. Just looking at the tags again, I saw that this is actually a size three, so it's basically translated into a large. I'm just ecstatic about this piece, man. I can't say enough.
tonight I'm going to be going into Langley for the opening ceremony or like the unveiling of uh, Vancouver's new CPL team that's starting next year in 2023 um, for the Canadian Premier League season. Um, I've been invited to the unveiling event. I'm really excited to go check it out and just see like what the direction of the team is and what their philosophies are going to be, that sort of stuff. So I'm sure all that's going to be discussed in like the speech sort of ceremony that they do. I'm going to try to get footage for you guys. I don't know if it's like one of those kind of like under wraps sort of things where they're like really stingy on like who they let take photos and videos, but um, I'll do my best on my iPhone and uh, just try to take you guys along for the ride. So yeah, I'll see you guys at the ceremony. We believe soccer should be accessible to everyone, bridging the gap between our communities. So as an immigrant coming to America, at the time the hostages took place, very difficult. Um, so every day we had to fight, we had to work, we had to try to prove ourselves. All right, what's good guys? So I'm just in Langley right now, just leaving the event center. So this is where they did the official announcement of Vancouver FC, which is the new CPL team here in Langley. Um, basically, the ceremony was just kind of like to unveil the team and introduce the new head coach, um, which is a pretty like reputable guy. Um, it seemed like he had coached like the Iranian national team before, coached in a bunch of um, different like Asian teams and I think he was the coach at LA Galaxy too from what um, one of the presenters Rob Friend had said um, so it seems like a good coach and uh, yes exciting times for the team you guys would have seen some of the clips where like they were just doing like the presentation where the coach was speaking he was getting like emotional um, just through his background and like the big opportunity that he had um, coming from where he came from it looks like the club has a good foundation and it's exciting for them and um, I'm excited to see how they do they're going to put a stadium here which is cool too another um, soccer specific stadium for players to aspire to play at and uh, yeah I got to see a lot of um, there's a lot of people I knew at the event too which was nice got to see a couple uh, buddies and then also like some former coaches and stuff and some current coaches so yeah overall it was a really nice event and uh, short and sweet I'm super tired and I want to get home and get to bed so I'll catch you guys in a little bit exhale good keep that lower back flat good uh, that anterior delt. Oh boy. The chest board of high pull. Four more. Control. Good. Really spread. Up. Good. All right, what's going on guys? So I wanted to try something a little bit different, a new segment on my channel, which is where I kind of discuss like a soccer game that's going on in the world uh, every week. So going forward, I'm probably gonna do it. So it's like uh, every time that Manchester United plays, which is like my favorite team, uh, I'm gonna kind of just do like a small little recap of my thoughts on the game and stuff. So once the Premier League starts up again later this month, then I'm gonna start doing that. But for right now, the first game that I wanted to kick this series off with, or this little segment, is the World Cup final, which was today, it was this morning, between Argentina and France. I'm gonna try to keep these segments like only a couple minutes, but forgive me if I go over that because I'm just so passionate about soccer. I love talking about it. Honestly, like where to even start? I mean, this was honestly the best game I think I've ever watched for soccer. I think it was just so exciting. It had everything that you could have asked for. It was Messi versus Mbappe. If you guys didn't see the results somehow, Argentina did end up winning on PK. So it was just an unbelievable game. And honestly, Towards like the beginning of the game, when Argentina was up 2-0 in the first half, I thought to myself, you know what, like this is honestly one of the worst World Cup finals I've ever seen just because it wasn't very competitive. Uh, Argentina was just completely dominating the game. It looked like France had no energy. I think they had an illness in their camp this week and so I think that that really took like a toll on some of the players. Um, I'm not sure, but you could just see in the final, they looked very lethargic. They didn't really look like they had the same spring in their step. Argentina was just so up for the game. They had energy, they were getting all over the pitch. 
dominating possession, um, getting tons of chances, and I don't even think France had a shot until like the second half at some point. It was just a very one-sided affair, and then out of nowhere, uh, France gets a PK, and Mbappe scores it, so that really puts the pressure back on Argentina, puts the competitiveness back into the game, and so I was really happy to see that. And then not long after, Mbappe scores an unbelievable volley to tie the game, and I just went insane. I just went nuts. I just remember thinking like, I can't believe that they've tied it up. Like it just came out of nowhere. It seemed so one-sided for so long in the game that I was just blown away and I couldn't believe that they they tied it up. So it was just amazing. And I think it was in the second half of extra time towards the end, Messi gets a goal and puts Argentina back up 3-2. And I mean, right there, I just thought that was the history books right there. Messi wins the World Cup for Argentina in extra time, just fairy tale ending. And uh, he's just gonna be crowned like the world's best player of all time. And uh, he's gonna be the GOAT pretty much. Uh, I thought that was done and dusted and then again another PK for France there's a block shot with an arm in the box and Mbappe his hat trick in the World Cup final I couldn't believe it like for somebody to be 23 years old and have played in two World Cups back-to-back -back World Cup finals and to score a hat trick so now he has four goals in World Cup finals at 23 that's like unheard of and incredible achievement and uh, he's just gonna go on to do amazing things in the game I'm sure I think that he has all the tools if he keeps himself healthy keeps his mentality right um, just unbelievable player so game ends up going into PKs and that's where there's a ton of pressure if you guys have ever been involved in penalty shootouts you know like how much pressure goes into it but nobody I think can understand how much pressure goes into it for those nations especially Argentina where the whole nation is wanting them they're trying to will them to win a World Cup for Messi it seemed like basically the like all those players would give anything just to give it to Messi. They didn't even really care about themselves. It was just so that Messi could get the World Cup. France missed two PKs and Martinez, man, he's just so intimidating in uh, in the goal going up to for PKs because he has so many antics and he's always kind of giving it and talking. I would want my keeper to be the same way, but just as a shooter against him, it must be so intimidating. Can't remember what the name of the player was that scored the winning PK. Cool as you like, sends the keeper the wrong way. And uh, yeah, just Argentina wins the World Cup uh, 2022 in Qatar. So unbelievable tournament. I remember thinking like as I said that it was like one of the worst World Cup finals I'd ever seen and then at the end It was just the, honestly the best World Cup final I've ever seen There's just so many emotions in the game so much going on uh, Anything you could ask for and I think that like as football fans Even though I'm a Ronaldo fan as you guys can see in the back just seeing Messi lift that World Cup is just beautiful for the sport And I think uh, it's just incredible so just buzzing honestly still from it even as a neutral I'm just buzzing to see such a great game So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the game too. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about the game and also let me know uh, what you guys think of like this series if you think that's something you'd like to see going forward yeah i just wanted to wish you guys also happy holidays and uh just wish you guys a happy new year as well lots of big stuff planned for the channel uh going forward in the new year and it's going to be one of my new year's resolutions or my new year's goals to be really consistent and to uh, just keep growing with you guys and keep providing you guys with the best content possible so thank you guys again so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and follow me on instagram and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace